Greetings folks, in this video I'll be looking at the new Super P14 channel ELRS receiver from Beta FPV. It comes in 2.4, 915 and 868 versions, weighs in at 15.6 grams, supports PWM, Crossfire and SBUS protocols, 14 PWM pins. It also has an RGB LED which tells you which state the, the receiver is in and also which packet rate it's set on. As it comes, it is on Express LRS 3.3.0 with no binding phrase. It also has VBAT sensing from 1 to 6S. So in this video, I'll show you how to bind it, how to configure it for PWM, Crossfire or SBUS, how to set up VBAT sensing, and all the other configuration options. It's also supplied with cables for VBAT sensing there, a servo Y cable and a three pin cable to fit into the RGB port there and a four pin cable to fit into the I squared C port. Looking at the pin lights, we have channels one to 10 on these pins here. Channel 11 and 12 by default are set up for the I squared C input channel 13 and 14 and VBAT sensing along the top. On the other side we have a USB-C input for firmware updates, diversity antennas and the status LED up here. Channel 11 and 12 via this plug here. As it comes from the factory this is set up to be the I squared C input so channels 11 and 12 are transferred to channels 13 and 14 pins up here. VBAT sensing here and this output here is for operating an RGB LED strip planned for the future. And the I squared C is I squared C based sensors such as a barometer, things like that, also planned for the future. So you can use it in a few different modes. You can have it all PWM where you get 14 PWM channels. Or you can have the I squared C set up, which means that you get 12 channels with channels 11 and 12 up on the, uh, the top here. Or you can have serial output. Crossfire or SBUS, where channels 13 and 14 become the serial output pins. Channel 14 for SBUS and channel 13 is RX, channel 14 is TX for the Crossfire output. And we can set these modes up via the web user interface and the hardware page. If you haven't yet set a passphrase on your transmitter and receiver, you can bind via the traditional method. And to do that, we power up and down three times, waiting two seconds at each step, according to the instruction manual. And then we should get a double orange flash from the LED here. Because I already have a passphrase set up, it's not going to do that for me, so I can't actually demonstrate that. But then we would go to the radio, find the Lua script, Express LRS Lua script, Scroll down to bind and hit bind, and then we should actually bind traditionally. But as I said, I have a passphrase, which is a much better way to bind anyway, so that's the best way to do it. To set up a passphrase on your transmitter or transmitter module, we go to the Lua script, the L Express LRS Lua script, click on Wi Fi connectivity, enable Wi Fi. And again, we'll join that access point on your computer or on your smartphone, and you'll get another setup page there where you can enter the passphrase and save it to the module. Uh, as it comes, it doesn't have a passphrase loaded, so you'll have to load your own. I have the micro one watt TX module here. I have already loaded a passphrase onto that, but I'll show you how to do that later on as well. With passphrase binding, all you need to do is plug the power in and Wait till it boots up. We have a solid LED there and just to prove that it's bound properly, we have servo action. Now for setup, putting it into Wi-Fi mode, plug the power in and just wait for 60 seconds until we get a green flashing light to indicate Wi-Fi mode. There we go, that's changed to green now, green pulsing light that means it's in Wi-Fi mode so now we can go to the computer. So with the receiver or transmitter in Wi-Fi mode, we now have a look at our networks and you'll see the Express LRS receiver access point show up if you join that. Then the Express LRS web 
or Wi-Fi user interface will show up and you can do all your setup in here. If this doesn't show up, then you'll need to uh, type that HTTP double dot slash slash 10.0.0.1 and enter the password, express LRS, and then this page will pop up. And in here, we can enter the binding phrase here. So I will enter my binding phrase, one, two, three, four, five, six. This can be whatever you want can be your name, can be a, a, a secret password. Then click Save and Reboot and your receiver will reboot again and be ready to go with a passphrase. With this Wi-Fi setup page, as well as setting the binding phrase, you can also change what each pin does. You can uh, reassign channels. Channel 1 can be all of these different channels. And you can set different frequencies. If you have high-speed digital servos, you can use a higher refresh rate. Or if you're standard servos or you don't know what sort of servos you've got, just leave it on 50 hertz. And you can see we can only address 12 pin sets here or 12 channels. And that's because 11 and 12 are set up as the I2C input at the moment. Channel 11 is actually on pin set 13 and channel 12 is on pin set 14. If you want access to the whole 14 PWM outputs, or you want to change to SBUS or Crossfire fire output instead of PWM, then we need to go to another page. It's an extra page to this Express LRS setup page. So it's the same web address, 10.0.0.1, but it's slash hardware.html, and that brings you to this hardware setup page. Now you sort of have to be careful with this page because you can actually reassign uh, the, the pins on the uh, processor chip. So if we scroll right down to the bottom, you can see pins 19 and 22 are assigned to SCL and SDA for the I2C input. This string of numbers here are the PWM output pins. What we need to do is take these two numbers and pop them in between the 23 and the 3 with a comma in between. Like that, so instead of having 19 and 22 down here, we have 19 and 22 up in this string of numbers. And that now enables all 14 PWM outputs and disables the I2C input. And then we save target configuration and that will upload it to the receiver and reboot it. So if we now go back to the web setup page, and go to model. We have all 14 PWM channels listed. And if we, now we can set the channel 13 and 14 to serial RX and serial TX. Uh, and that gives us the possibility of connecting via SBUS or Crossfire or all of these other ones as well. So let's try SBUS. Uh, so SBUS will come out on channel 14 or which has now become the TX or RX pin. So we'll save that. Now the receiver is set to SBUS output and we can connect to a flight control board. So now we're on SBUS, I can connect it to the SBUS input on a flight control board to channel uh, to pin 14 there. Uh, I have my transmitter on. There it is there. Wait till it boots up. So we're booted up now. We have signal there, and we have SBUS connection there. And we can do the same thing for Crossfire as well. Now, finally, to set up VBAT sensing, we have the VBAT sensing cable, and that plugs into the VBAT pin set up the top there. And I have a battery here. Now, it's a good idea to take a reading of the battery level to start off with, so you know how to adjust or how to calibrate your VBAT sensing readout. So that is 11.86, remember that. We'll power up the receiver using an ESC. So there we go, there's the flight battery there. And we'll plug the VBAT sensing wires into the, into the balance port, making sure you get the polarity correct. Black negative, red positive. So there we go, that's connected up now. And so we go to telemetry and discover sensors. Now you can see here we're getting a reading of uh, 
seven volts, which is obviously wrong on the receiver battery. So we need to go in and adjust the range uh, and the ratio and the offset possibly in that sensor. So ratio, if we look at the voltage up here, we know it's 11.87 volts. So let's just play with this until we get roughly the right reading. There are some suggested values on the Beta FPV website, but they didn't work for me. So uh, let's stick to this. You can go up in precision. 11.9, 11.6. All right, so now we'll go to offset. We want to get to 11.8. So I've ended up with a ratio of 8.4 and an offset of 0.1 to give me the correct VBAT reading, but you'll need to adjust it for your own system, I guess. So that's about it for the Beta FPV Super P 14 channel receiver, Express LRS. This one is 2.4 gigahertz, but you can get the other frequencies as well. There's a lot of information on the Beta FPV website about how to do voltage sensing, the firmware file, which isn't on Express LRS configurator at the moment, and more setup tips. This is an amazing receiver. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.